So what's the expression crocodile tears mean? It means um, tears of insincerity, insincere, feigned display of emotion. So I once wrote a journal on an old blog journal of mine called The Crocodile Tears Are Real. I may put out a shortened version of that again. But basically what I meant was that um, some autistic people have a way of displaying their real emotions that gets horribly judged and actually seen in that light as though the emotions are insincere and if you can put yourself in this position for a minute and think about the notion of having real emotions really being in grief and in pain and in anger and hurting and having it be assumed that you're just feigning and BSing and being histrionic and melodramatic or that you just don't care or whatever it's it's pretty hurtful it's really insulting and hurtful what causes people to see some autistic people as who are expressing their emotions as one expressing crocodile tears crocodile tears the main cause of this the main causes of these are a combination of expressive language differences stemmed from the brain and the fact that we both experience and process and then display outward our emotions differently not with a lack of sincerity not less not feigned just different the some of the things that that um, are different about the expressive language are for one the flat effect um, the emotions are processed more introspectively and often more slowly in the autistic brain not because we lack empathy but actually because we're sort of processing those emotions in a much more complex way because we tend to see and feel things objectively from multi angles so as you can imagine feelings and emotions are actually very complicated and we're sort of trying to grasp them so in that it's difficult for us to actually verbalize at all about something even if it is upsetting to us while we're experiencing that emotion in fact if we tried to we would almost could almost just break down and like not be able to be verbal anymore and so a lot of the times people will see um, you know especially like Aspie's hurt who are verbose appear to be appear to almost seem scripted and calculated in how they're talking about some pretty serious and painful issues that doesn't mean that they're a sinister manipulative narcissist whatever they just are pulling an I'm fine I'm fine and you know are blocking their pain especially because as an Aspie likely if you were to get to a profound emotion it would be very hard to verbalize it and explain to that person so, so what some people might do is explain in a more factual way the nature of the problem whatever and then pause 
if they're with a good friend that is or a family member they trust that they will pause and then they will cry after and go nonverbal um if the emotions happen when the person's speaking the speech may go down and become childish or young sounding if it does that that also that also brings forth judgment um Neurotypicals will automatically assume that a person is being melodramatic and histrionic if that happens. Um, that's what happened to me when I was losing it and, you know, having in my grief, you know, as an 18, 19 year old um, with issues going through a really tough time, undiagnosed, very frightened, um, upset about many things, being abused. You know, I'd show up at the psych ward, I'd try to verbalize, I'd be crying. My, you know, it, I was accused of being histrionic. That There was not a lot of empathy. I was feeling very badly and in a lot of pain. And I was just accused of being a borderline histrionic um, female. You know, it was just gross. Um, you know, even when I self-harmed you know I was then called factitious as opposed to somebody who was impulsive and in a lot of pain and not getting heard you know and resorting to a meltdown action of that because I was a verbal 18 19 year old girl a bright and verb I was grossly overestimated and judged in that at the same time um so yeah basically looked at like bleh, crocodile tears, pathological bullshit. It's really, really insulting, really terrible to think about how many autistic adults might be expressing their emotions and in that trying to, you know, seek out help and not seen as worthy enough because they're lumped in in because of their expressive language presentation, they're lumped in with crocodile tears like the people that cry crocodile tears are usually smoother about it actually believe it or not they're more convincing whereas you'll find that people that are autistic and awkward in their expressions and childlike and melodramatic and somewhat flat I'll explain how the flat effect works in a minute they are the ones that appear more obviously awkward unfortunately a lot of neurotypicals seem to have it backwards when it comes to this. They think that they see the ones that are more obvious because they're usually not all that perceptive, you know? Um, to find details like that. But I pick up on the difference between an awkward, different expression of emotion and one that is faint. And a lot of NT clinicians don't seem to understand that difference to a detrimental, detrimental level. It's inhumane and unethical, albeit inadvertent. You know, um, in this, we become afraid to express our emotions. We don't feel safe then we can internalize and it's terrible, terrible for our health. Or we can develop drug and alcohol problems. Or we can have, you know, wait until we have a massive meltdown, shutdown, burnout, and, you know, collapse or snap, you know, because we don't feel safe being able to display our emotions, our feelings, in ways because it's going to come off as awkward and it's going to be judged and pathologized in categories that don't in actuality apply to it to it to us so it's infuriating to think about but anyway going back to the flat effect thing I think it's something to do with the emotional like expression the speed of it being slowed and if it's slowed that can appear to almost be like fake-ish to people who are ignorant you know because I've seen 
myself. Like literally for a variety of reasons I've had, I've been flat when I'm, a lot of Aspies when they're depressed are flat. They may initially get emotional and cry and whatever, usually by themselves again due, due to that lack of trust or with another very close trusted friend, but often like especially in a more chronic level or after the big cry or whatever, or before it, it hasn't come yet, there's a flatness. And that is from sadness, but it doesn't appear to show much on the face. And in that time, a person could be talking verbally about their hardship while they're flat. And that is misunderstood as being callous about it. The worst thing that could happen is that an Aspie or Aspie phenotype person say their family member like passed away under, you know, unknown circumstances. The person might be dealing with their grief and introverts do this too, not just Aspies, by appearing flat, you know, to others. And in this, the others go, ooh, you know, did they... You know, was was there foul play? Was some way, you know, it's a false accusation. It's terrible. A person is in so much pain about losing their family member and they're getting accused of potentially killing them. I mean, I know that family members have to be investigated and whatever, but anyway, that's a worst case scenario of someone with a flat effect getting misperceived. Those are a few things on expressive language, crocodile tears, flat effect. Yeah.